All right, safe man, I got my helmet on. I'm ready for the day. <laughs> Oh god, my general like knee sort of area. Oof, alright, yo, I can't wait for my five guys. And the meal too. Wait, hang on a second. This isn't my order. Yo guys, it is your boy Niran here, and you are watching FTW. This, of course, is the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. What's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, over in America, and President Joe Biden's dog has bitten a Secret Service officer for the 11th time. This and XL bullies, bro, the world's looking like Call of Duty zombies right now. This dog knows something. 11 times! That secret agent's undercover. Oh, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Honestly, nothing's gonna happen. Joe Biden's closer to being put down than the dog is. Don't let Arsenal's canine get any ideas, though. Chasing Thomas' party down Islington High Street. Speaking of Arsenal, and this week saw a highly anticipated North London derby. Last year's runners-up versus a revolutionised Tottenham, aka Harry Kane's two favourite clubs. Luckily for him, this one ended level at the Emirates with Saka and Son involved in a battle royale. Christian Romero got himself an own goal first off the bat, though. A 7.3 rating. For Arsenal, and Postacoglu is going to be slapping him on the barbie soon. Lukaku Saka brought out a dart celebration as he thought it was his goal. And that, of course, is Tottenham midfielder James Madison. Some poor random fan in the crowd at the Emirates is going to need to go to AD immediately. <laughs> James and his boys won't be too impressed when they see Bukayo Saka playing darts in the pub this weekend. But James got his revenge as he spun Bukayo Saka for Hung Min Son's equaliser. This was the Saka that was actually defending for the Gunners. I got told that he did the darts celebration. Uh, he must have still been doing it when I... I turned him for the first goal, I think. Yeah, that's nah, yeah, it's a violation. That little white baby that got called Bukayo back in the day, the dad's changed the name. He's called Chris now. James Madison is gonna be showboating at his next family roast. That's all I'm saying. Nothing gravy, and I never look when I'm poor because I'm the absolute governor. Arsenal could have been clear though in this one if not for Gabriel Jesus' finishing. He was crucified for his miss on Twitter, but did at least turn water into wine somewhere. Oof, can't wait for a little bit of hydration. <laughs> What in the fuck? This man is not the same footballer when he's presented with a chance in the 18-yard box. To be fair, Arsenal did take the lead again through a sack of penalty, but just a matter of seconds later, Arsenal threw it away. <laughs> the players were far too distracted celebrating the goal that had given them the lead. Girls are holding me tight. Flows like a hot pool, daily and night. Saka was pleading with Tottenham players to let him complete his nine data for his celebration. Hang on, hang on, let me finish, let me finish. And all of this because of George Enio. He doesn't deserve the Enio on the end of his name. David Raya pulled out an unbelievable save during this game, to which newly dropped shot stopper Aaron Ramsdale applauded from the bench. Jamie Carragher didn't think it was genuine on Sky Sports, to which Aaron's dad started a war of words with him on Twitter. Listen, I just hope that Jamie doesn't see the Ramsdale family car driving down the motorway on the Way home. How do you feel when you see it back? You can't condone that behaviour. There's bad form continuing elsewhere in London as 10 man Chelsea lost to Aston Villa. It's been West London Blues since Todd Bowley took charge, honestly. He's not gonna slap next season in the championship. Chelsea Twitter is not letting go yet, though, saying that Rome wasn't built in a day. Rome would be a catastrophe if it was built by a Chelsea Football Club. I don't think Chelsea could build Blackpool Pleasure Beach, let alone Rome. They've spent £1 billion to go from 12th to 14th. Chelsea Chelsea fans are in disarray realising Leicester have scored more Premier League goals in 2023 than them and they're not even in the Prem anymore. We're going to practice the world to play penalty. I feel sure I have to reverse the contact. Domino's reckon they've delivered 852,609 pizzas since Chelsea last scored a goal. Yep, it's a sh** house or reward for them. And speaking of that, their Premier League goal of the month is going to be coming from 2021, mate. I don't think they've scored in September. Todd Bowley, if you're listening in, don't accept a birthday present from Chelsea fans. It's not going to be what it seems. Maurizio Pochettino's at least happy, celebrating at Malo Gusto getting sent off, meaning there's less players for him to watch. Their next run of games is crazy, by the way. All massive fixtures. They're going to go 007 for matches played. Are you mental? Nicholas Jackson somehow banned already for accumulating five yellow cards for descent in September. What is going on here? He's stat padding the wrong thing. Here we have Nicholas Jackson next time the referee pulls out a yellow card in October. And for Villa, there was violence from Martinez at a steward.
The rest of the Villa squad, though, are complaining about their kits, which apparently get too wet when they sweat through them and weigh them down, affecting performance. But they still beat Chelsea. Carl Walker's got a plan to defeat Villa when City next play them. It could be worse, though, as at Sheffield United, they were pumped 8-0 at home by Newcastle. Could have gone either way, really, this one. 999. Look, listen, I've got people impersonating a Premier League club here. Other clubs are desperate turning up to clamp the blades in a field in Yorkshire. Just calm down, calm down, bro. You're gonna get some, you're gonna get some. Apparently, at one point, they had a 0.1% chance of winning the game. Look, lads, I'm not being funny. There's hope. It's eight. FC24 commentators were having absolutely none of it, though. They weren't the better side on the day. Didn't deserve to win, to be honest. They've scored more than Chelsea have this season in about 65 minutes, Sue. One Blades fan was caught reading a book in the stands. She had absolutely no faith in her team to even bring this book in the first place. She's probably summoning a demon from it as we speak. Sheffield United goalkeeper Wes Fodringham could not be asked as Alexander Isak came running through. Meanwhile, Sean Longstaff has got some interesting celebrations in the tunnel. <laughs> Why is he meowing? And it's Kurt Zuba! Now, there's been carnage in Italy, though. As Scudetto holders Napoli are imploding. Victor Osimen was subbed off after missing a penalty this week. And Napoli's TikTok page, known for mental memes and self-deprecation, went a bit far. And by a bit, I mean they missed their junction by four EU borders. I'm not a boy. At the very least, this is really strange to go at their own player like that after last season and what he's done for the club. And there was even another one doubling down. That one showed him begging for a penalty and then missing the resulting one, but I can't show it because of copyright reasons. It's like Mo Salah missing a chance and Liverpool's official Twitter saying, go back to the pyramids, mate. It's extremely inappropriate, definitely offensive. Victor and his agent are planning to sue the club. Could you imagine this TikTok playing in court? I'm a and what would a defence like to offer? Uh, Your Honour, quite honestly, I don't know what the fuck is going on. All of this, of course, after their club's president said he wouldn't sign a player that wanted to go to African Cup of Nations. And over on their TikTok page now, they're posting awesome end prop to save their job. Look, it's too late now. Italian expected racism's already on the rise. The official XR charts, not looking good if you're from Naples. Chelsea are apparently monitoring the situation, want to sign him. Honestly, if I was him, I'd stay where I am and take the hits rather than go to Chelsea. But he did start yesterday evening. But if you're confused at why you'd want to play, the plan from the Nigerian has very much already been hatched. Speaking of unhappy ballers, and Neymar is not pleased with his time in Saudi Arabia already. Oh, for crying out loud. He's supposedly not happy with his coach's antics. This guy is, is not even a coach. Look, listen, let's be honest. He's not there for coaching, is he? Why is he there? Cash, coins, Kwonga. At the end, we're playing this football because of money. And the coaching staff won't be too pleased with him either when they see him take the entirety of March off as unpaid leave. At this rate, he'll be on soccer aid in two years. Look, Nate, I know you're not happy right now, but Saudi Arabia is rich, all right? So invest. No, 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 no. Nate, I mean, I, di I didn't say in. Anyway, back in the Premier League and United faced off against Burnley in a Valt Veghorst custody battle. The winner gets no custody of Valt Veghorst and United took a narrow 1-0 victory versus Vincent Kompany's side. The Belgian was fuming, questioning his team, his tactics and his own hat size. Johnny Evans started for United in 2023 and actually played well. He had a goal disallowed early on. I can only imagine because VAR just didn't know he was playing. Bruno Fernandes gave the Northern Irishman his Man of the Match award and suddenly I'm starting to think if they want to solve their right wing problem, they might have to sign David Beckham. Their squad in three weeks is going to be looking very retro indeed. Three, that's it, Rio on the left. Chelsea fans are devastated watching United betray them and move up the Premier League table. I thought we were brothers. Fuck off, you're lying. But it's not stopping the protest for the Old Trafford side. They've even brought Glazer out vapes to the table. Now, after the game, and Marcus Rashford, whilst driving home, was involved in a car crash. Very scary stuff. His insurance company won't be too pleased with him down the phone. Oh, Rashford, you prat. Medical staff for a Marcus Rashford injury. They'll be year five science key stage one students. Thankfully, he's okay. A very much scary time. Marcus, please be careful on the roads. There's more drama at United, though, in the ongoing Jaden Sancho situation. A statement from United suggested that he's been banished from the training ground and basically any building to do with the club. Banished is a mental word, by the way. They've got him bringing in packed lunches. He'll be knocking on the window at 10 p.m. to get the attention of the dinner ladies. 
Get that fucking cooker on. Eric Ten Hag's apparently planning a barbecue for players' parents. Jaden's dad will be getting escorted out of the building after trying to claim a five wings and chips box meal. Jaden's been caught playing FIFA late at night once again. He's getting peppered on the game as well, man. Whoever this is who's beaten him is about to receive a DM statement in a second. We're more likely to see him on filthy fellas than back on a pitch for United. <laughs> <laughs> Former Barcelona midfielder Arturo Vidal's weighed in on the situation, saying he's confused by Eric's behaviour and that bald guys are complicated. I'm not being funny. Look at Arturo Vidal's head top. The guy's 90% bald himself. Meanwhile, Maurizio Pochettino is shaving his head as we speak, hoping that complication equals results. It's a sad state of affairs for Jaden and Eric, everyone at the club, really, and I do hope it's sorted somehow. Man City faced off against Nottingham Forest and swept them aside 2-0, though things got a bit spicier in the second half as Roger was sent off for grabbing Morgan Gibbs White. Morgan went down very easily here, I've got to say. Now, nah, to be fair, ridiculous decision from Rodri, especially when you're 2-0 up and under no pressure. He was sent off, of course, and will now be suspended for the Arsenal game as well. Pep Guardiola's regenerating a new Youth Academy DM wearing the number 94 shirt so that he doesn't have to play Calvin Phillips for the game. Honestly, Calvin's less likely to get action than a GB News duo. <laughs> Well, look, she... <laughs> Could have got worse as well with Edison going up against the Wanyi. Here is a Wanyi's view of the incident. And Liverpool kept their unbeaten run going with a hard-fought victory over West Ham. Darby Nunez was his usual self, missing a sitter, then scoring a 286% technologically more advanced volley. Everton brought out a new LGBTQ shirt for support to the community. And it is one of the shirts of all time, I'm not gonna lie. It's just a guy is strangely out for the entire season now. Yeah, look, listen, I love the message. I love the idea of doing this, but I like objectively this is a horrendous shirt like stylistically Sean Dyche is gonna be concerned when Dominic Calvert-Lewin turns up to it in training Daddy chill what the hell is even that? Mikhailo Mudrik was pictured attempting a bicycle kick this week in training. And looking at the trajectory of this, it looks like the rest of Mudrik's season. That ball is in Craven Cottage by now, mate. One Arsenal fan wanted a new Arsenal kit for the season and ordered it customised. But wanted the name for the shirt kind of left empty with the number 14. His mistake was saying leave at all, judging by what he ended up getting delivered. Liverpool defeated Austrian side last in the Europa League last Thursday. And whilst out there, a group of Liverpool fans realised that if you collect cups and take them back to the bar, you earn money for doing so. So they collected a ridiculous amount and earned a serious amount of cash. They lifted more cups here in 12 seconds than Tottenham have since 2000. Austrian security will not take too kindly though to me smuggling free mugs into the ground to the bar to get my free £4.78. At Brentford versus Everton, and officials there analysed the VAR decision for five full minutes before realising it was the wrong passage of play. Yet yeah, I'm just, I'm not seeing it. I don't know, I can't. Jeff, we're in the 65th minute. Why are you looking at a clip from the 30th? Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Let me just change that. Jeff, when do you think this game is from? They didn't even have VAR back then. One Brighton fan celebrated a goal in the Europa League last week. Very uniquely, to say the least. Meanwhile, Ange Postacoglu proved himself to be the most wholesome manager in the Premier League. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have sadly run out of time. My apologies. Can we? In front. Oh, yeah, oh, is it? Oh, he's got the best question. Come on, your question. I saw you. There what you is go. your Come question? On, I knew it was for me. So ah. there you go. Well spotted, Ange. Thank you. Ash, perfect whole season. Okay. Um, thank you for that question. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, our role is to try and make you happy and, and, and proud um, every time we go out there. So that's what we'll try and do. What a man. I just want to have a pint with him. Now, there was madness in Spain as Barcelona completed the comeback of the ages to beat Celta Vigo. They were 2-0 down with 10 to go and came back to win 3-2. Their admin was going wild over the goal going in. Oh, that's a bit of a long name, this one, innit? You wouldn't want that on the back of your shirt. Joao Cancelo scored the winner here and was clearly gassed at full time. <laughs> Entiendo que eres muy exigente porque... I wonder where he got that energy from. <laughs> Playing it down the line for the right back now has a completely new meaning. Fair to say his teammates were stressed when he took matters into his own hands, realising the dressing room door was locked. Meanwhile, elsewhere at Barca, there's even more violence as Alejandro Balde will be suspended for an awful challenge.
It was disappointment for Real, who lost the Madrid derby to Atletico with 3 1 the scoreline there. Real fans were excited. Excitement quickly was dashed, though. Alvaro Morata scored early on here. He's cycling through his usual clubs again. Can't wait for him to be linked to Juventus for a fourth time this decade. This guy, honestly, Real lost to a pyramid scheme here. Antonio Rudiger was letting his intrusive Chelsea thoughts win by losing the game. In midfield for Atletico, and this was the best performance from Coke since, well, Joao Cancelo. Meanwhile, Carlo Angelotti will be fuming, realizing he can't raise three eyebrows at the same time in order to come back and win this game. It went from bad to worse for Real with another injury setback for young star boy Arda Goulet. He was injured in training just weeks after joining the club and is now out again for a number of weeks. Carlo Angelotti was confident that he'd be returning this weekend until he wasn't. Young Arda here is following in the footsteps of Real inspiration Eden Hazard. He'll be watching the game from home this weekend until he gets up to get the remote and ends up in A&E again. <laughs> Cadiz fans were loving life after their match ended this weekend, giving all of their support to the club's groundsmen. <laughs> Meanwhile, shockingly, Girona are top of La Liga. There's no joke there, they're just actually sick. PSG obliterated Marseille 4-0 in Le Classique to make a statement to the rest of Ligue 1. Goals here came from Ashraf Hakimi, Colo Mouani, and a brace from Gonzalo Ramos. But Kylian Mbappe was injured and had to come off early here. Ethan was ready to step in when required. Still, we all realise that he's like 12 years old still. A child. No. A disappointment for Kylian, hopefully not too bad of an injury, but it didn't stop Selena Gomez watching on and enjoying from the stands. She was getting excited when she saw Usman Dembele complete two stepovers. I'm single! I'm just a little high maintenance, but I love you so much. Listen, if I'm Dembele with how famous she is, I'm putting a ring on that immediately. Just please don't listen to Ashraf Hakimi when he suggests putting all of your life savings into your own mother's name. Despite all of that, though, they're not top of the table, PSG. Instead, top of league on humble breast. Trust me, breast is always top of my table. I'm all right, ladies and gentlemen. Over in Germany, and Harold Kane scored a hat trick in a 7-0 win. Three goals for the Englishman. He is really settling in in Munich. Well, I like lads. Guten Tag. Alan Shearer will be thankful that those goals don't actually count in England. Kane, by the way, he's doing an unbelievable job. I think I remember seeing a record, a stat somewhere. He's having like the best start goal scoring wise of any player that's ever joined Bayern in the Bundesliga. Honestly, at this point, saying the word Lederhosen is more challenging than scoring goals for him. But even better than that, Stuttgart striker Serhu Garassi, who at 27 has burst onto the scene stronger than Mika Richards. You don't know where I'm from, dog. With 10 goals from his first five Bundesliga games this season. The Gideon has gone absolutely crazy. Chelsea are preparing a £147 million bid as we speak. Meanwhile, another African goal getter is impressing in the Bundesliga too. It's Victor Boniface of Bayer Leverkusen and his Twitter is genuinely incredible. Prime time Lagos Nigerian Twitter combined with him just randomly not making defenders. This is amazing. Elsewhere in Germany and Borussia Dortmund accidentally leaked Julian Brandt's number in a WhatsApp chat. He's going to have to get very defensive when Dortmund fans challenge him to eight ball pool on iMessage. Hi, uh, I'm John. I'm just ringing to apologise. Where the f Who the fuck's got my number and I'll let you off, mate, because it's the first time your number's come up. In Italy and at Juventus, they conceded an absolute car crash of a goal with Wojciech Chesney playing it out and getting an assist, but not quite as you would imagine. It's happened again. And at Roma, new boy Romelu Lukaku is settling in well with three goals in three. It's lovely to see him back in form, but Jose Mourinho will be laughing, realising that Chelsea are going to sign him back for another 70 million pounds even though he's literally on loan from them and so the cycle continues ah oh, just go get the timberlands now there is time for your goals of the week and we stay on the italian vibe hamburgo and honestly this is an absolute thundercracker of a free kick from miles out but a very different kind of goal for the final one here in peru where kevin cerner has picked up the ball in his own half and beaten defender after defender before cheekily lobbing the ball over the goalkeeper to complete a sensational solo effort in Saudi Arabia though now and Cristiano Ronaldo's back in the goals and that's without even being able to see them. There were so many flares and pyros let off in the ground that you couldn't even see the goal from where the camera angle was being filmed. The assist here ladies and gentlemen 
the pyrotechnics. It gives a new meaning, really, to the goalkeeper getting smoked here. I'm not gonna lie. The poor guy was left confused as Ronaldo was bearing down on his goal. I see. Meanwhile, really, it is time for Saudi Arabia to follow in the UK's footsteps and ban vapes. They've really gone too far. And over in the Netherlands, there was absolute carnage between Ajax and Feyenoord in the Eredivisie. Feyenoord scored three inside the first 37 minutes of this one. And with their side lying 14th in the table, Ajax fans took matters into their own hands, throwing fireworks onto the pitch and getting the game abandoned. It looks like they're going to have to use the £100 million from the Anthony deal to fix their own doors. I'll be honest with you, they have a point, really. The board have been acting uselessly and coaching staff. Ajax's CEO's in for a shock when he realises you shouldn't sell your best players every year. As the game was abandoned and chaos was kicking off outside, it wasn't stopping Feyenoord's players from vibing in the dressing room. And the game had to be continued from the point of abandonment on a new day, only for Ajax to concede again. Santiago Jimenez even managed to complete a hat-trick three days after he scored his second goal of the match. Truly ridiculous scenes in the Netherlands. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game, the segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. Ponta. And that concludes the beautiful game. Now, back in Saudi Arabia, and Steven Gerrard was pictured in traditional Saudi Arabian attire. Of all the things going on with Saudi Arabia, this is probably one thing I, I care the least about, to be honest with you. I'm just concerned from when he tries to pay his waiter in Arabic at a meal later on in the evening. What's it? What's it? What's it? Tell me Riyad Mahrez produced the filthiest touch of all time. A ball roll, first time, is absolutely mental. If I tried this, I'm snapping muscles that I didn't even know existed. I mentioned Cristiano Ronaldo scoring earlier and in that game Al Nazar beat Al Ali 4-3. Sadio Mane was excited about his team scoring so much so he jumped on the back of his former teammate Bobby Firmino. Yeah this league is not serious yet I'm not gonna lie. In Brazil and there's a beautiful story of Lucas Moura who of course left Tottenham recently to go back to his childhood club Sao Paulo. Well he helped deliver the club to their first trophy in 11 years and honestly the emotion on his face and the rest of the squads is priceless. This is what football is all about. In the same game though the love wasn't quite being shared between players and coaches hell, in Malaysia and we love to see players bantering with referees before the games even kicked off. These two are just mates, they went to school together. But once again we have to contrast that with direct aggression and violence as over in Mexico. This man can't have children for the next 11 business years. Meanwhile the commentators creasing in the background. Yeah it's a violation. Speaking of violations and this mascot wanted to try and fit in with the player behind him by poking his own ears out. I listen, man, come on. No, you didn't have to do him like that. He's put you out onto the pitch. He can't help the fact that if he had a hearing aid, it'd be a Virgin Media satellite dish. But closer to home and the shithousery continues as Leicester striker Jamie Vardy scored a penalty against Bristol City and decided to take it upon himself to run the entire length of the pitch to celebrate in front of Bristol City's fans. You know what award this guy's getting. I think that's back-to-back -back weeks. That's crazy. Over at Leeds and manager Daniel Fark produced the second best time touch of the week. Listen, honestly, he could have done a job for them in the Premier League last season. And at Norwich, pour one out for their fans who travelled all the way to Plymouth only to be 4-0 down at half-time. The game ended 6-2 in the end. Thankfully for Norwich fans, they can at least count the goals they conceded on one hand. Even more painful stuff though going on at Scunthorpe United, whose club are in disarray at the moment. So much so that banning orders are being handed out to fans who are criticising the club on social media. I mean, that is criminal. That is a footballing dictatorship. And the club's Twitter account even even got deleted midweek as well. The owner really said that he just doesn't want to be involved anymore. Now over in Canada and the game is level. It's 1-1 over in Vancouver. Your opponents are coming forward. You've got the opportunity to be a hero and clear the ball off the line. <laughs> Great finish, in fairness to the guy. I mean, you can't take that away from it. Speaking of great finishes, into the wrong place. And in Brazil, there's having no composure and then there's having negative composure. Back in Malaysia, and we saw some strong connections being built between player and referee there. It's not the case across the entire country, though, however. As a player for Salangor FC in Malaysia, who received a red card after full time, was not happy with the decision and even kicked out at the official. In the Europa League, and there was Bosnian history. Azen Altmar were 3 up against HSK.
HSK before the Bosnian side scored four goals uninterrupted to win their Europa Conference League game 4-3 and the first time a Bosnian team's ever even been in the group stages of a European competition. Seattle Sounders have announced they're going to be changing their badge from next season. Honestly, it's not that bad, but it's kind of boring. Can we please ban, like, minimalism? It's looking like a pro club's badge back in the Netherlands again and a Roda JC defender's not going to want to watch the highlights from their most recent fixture. Meanwhile, Scottish side Montrose were tweeting about a substitute with Kerr Waddle coming onto the pitch. Kerr Waddle of a kind. Might have been a different one. Because, well, I mean, they've completely butchered his name. Now, though, it's time for Still Nil Nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is a segment of the show where I bring to you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And shout out to this kid, okay? Because this is the best bit of goalkeeping you're going to see all week. <laughs> That might be more saves than Andre Anana has made this season. Manchester United, you know what to do. On to the weird stuff though now. Only a couple of stories this time. We actually start off with quite an impressive one in Northern Ireland. Where Love Hall, Lowell, Love Call, who the fuck knows. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. But they managed to beat reigning Northern Irish champions Larne this week after being promoted from the second division last season. The reason why this is impressive is because they represent the smallest place in the entirety of Europe's top flight. There is no air area that is smaller than where they're from in a top flight in Europe. I think their village is about 200 odd people in total. So about 10% of the entire area has just beaten the league winners. And finally, there was a crazy cup tie over in Austria. Now I mentioned this story when the draw happened, but Red Bull basically bought out a club called Austria Salzburg in the mid thousands, rebadged it, renamed it, and basically took away the entire DNA of the club. This gruntled Austria Salzburg fans decided to found their own Phoenix club and they played each other in the cup for the first time since the recreation of the new Austria Salzburg. There was absolutely mental scenes amongst fans before kickoff. Austria Salzburg wore a shirt sponsor as a direct dig to the Red Bull franchise, but unfortunately and unsurprisingly were defeated 4-0. Will we see them in the same division soon? That though is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. It's been a pleasure, Ransom at you guys today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.